And yes, there's also a lot of, all you gotta do is, or the best way is to take $1,000 and when you do this, and it's gonna make you $10,000 and when you do that, and then you put it in this account and then you're set up for the rest of your life. Sis, that's Debo. What's up and welcome back. So today's video is gonna be for the parents that want to start setting aside money for their kids and not just set aside money, but actually make sure that their money is working for them. So invested in assets like stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, just so you can make sure that you get the most bang for your buck. So I'm gonna be talking about custodial accounts, more specifically UGMA and Utmas. And if this is your first time hearing of these two accounts, and you're like, what the heck is that? Never heard of it before. The UGMA is the Uniform Gifts to Minors Act. And the UTMA is the Uniform Transfers to Minors Act. And although it says UGMA, UTMA, they're basically like the same thing. The UTMA allows you just, you know, a few more assets jumbled in there. But basically, they act the same. So essentially, in my mind, they are the same Thing. and unfortunately we do have to do a few quick disclaimers um, I will say that a lot of people watching don't want to be confused and if you are like me you're very simple and you want to take things you know section by section so in this video we are just going to be talking about these custodial accounts um, there may be other ways as you start doing your own research which I always recommend that you do it does not matter who you follow or watch on YouTube always take that information and then go and do your own research so you can come to your own conclusion about what is best for you and your money and your situation um, but some people watching may find that you, their money is better put into other accounts some people watching may feel like UGMAs and UGMA accounts are a waste of time that is completely fine that is not the objective of the video we're just going to be giving you some options that you can go through especially if your kid is not old enough to have earned income which is needed for a custodial Roth R we are all in these internet streets we all hear people you know talking about the best investment accounts um, and custodial Roth IRAs do come up a lot and they are great but if your child is 16 months old it's going to be kind of hard to find a job or a way for that child to earn earn income and so a custodial Roth IRA may not be an option for you until your child is old enough or of age to actually do something um, that can earn them money and yes there's also a lot of all you gotta do all is gotta or do the best way is to take a thousand dollars and you do this and, and this gonna make you ten thousand dollars and you do that and then you put it in this account and then you're set up for the rest of your life and yes that sounds great but depending on where you are from you know you gotta watch those all you gotta do is people someone off the street can be like hey I can make you ten thousand dollars all you got to do is sis that's Debo run we don't want you in any legal trouble just to make a quick buck so I'm just saying this when it comes to investing do your research take your time um and don't always try to seek to make the quickest, biggest bucks because if you don't do it right, it can land you in a bit of trouble. So let's go ahead and bring it back to the main purpose of the video. These custodial accounts act like irrevocable trust in the sense that certain changes or amendments cannot be made without the beneficiary, which would be the child. And you can open these accounts for family members. You can open these accounts as a guardian or of course as a parent uh, but you do want to keep in mind that these funds are going to be the beneficiaries once that beneficiary reaches legal age which is 18 in most states and so if you want to leave them ten thousand thirty thousand dollars you don't have really a say so in how they are going to be spending this money you can do what you can throughout the child's life and make sure that you give them the the tools and the resources to properly manage their finances but there's nothing you can really do you know to keep them from buying a pony and three teslas if that is what they choose to do and i will say when you are looking into these type of accounts 
you want to take into consideration what the purpose is for any investment account that you open. You want to have a purpose for this account. And I will say with me, my purpose is not to build wealth for my children. It's not to build wealth, but I also don't live my life with a what if fear based mentality. And I find that I, that keeps a lot of people from even looking in the direction of these accounts once they learn that once the child becomes legal age the money is theirs i know the what ifs start bubbling up and we're like you know what if the child grows up to be a drug addict that's something when you do your research you may see a lot of people um trying to steer people away from these accounts saying well what if they grow up to be a drug addict what if they grow up you know and god forbid become um mentally impaired or something like that and there's a lot of what ifs this is life you know there's a lot of what ifs up in the air but you can't live your life that way you know and that's why it's important to set your intention for this account if you open this account what is the purpose and for me the purpose is just to gift my children funds when they become of age to help them have a leg up in life so if they want to purchase a car you know they can do that if they are going on and doing higher education if they want to get an apartment or get you know caught up on bills they can do that if they want to go out and just purchase whatever yeah at the end of the day they can do that but i know in the back of my mind what my risks are with this account and i know what the purpose is and it's just to say hey this is this money that i've gifted you you know i've, I've done all i can do throughout your lifetime and i just pray that you use it you know to your advantage but i know at 18 i've been 18 before i'm not going to make the best decisions so i'm not going to put you know thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of dollars in this account Account. my main goal for my kids is ten thousand dollars each so when I get to that place where I know it's going to be ten thousand dollars each then my hands are off of it and I don't have to you know bite my fingernails because in my mind it's it's okay you know I, I can afford to lose that ten thousand as long as I've done my due diligence and I have other accounts for them and on the back end when it comes to wealth building like a custodial Roth IRA. Now another thing to take into consideration is the fact that these accounts are not really tax advantaged. They are not tax deferred. That means that you will be paying taxes on your earnings as you go. And I will say don't let this you know deter you from these accounts either because once again it's going to depend on how much you are putting in these accounts. And I'll be honest like I know the typical person we're not putting tens of thousands of dollars a year into accounts for our children we're trying to keep our heads above water and do what we can to help build wealth and give our kids more than what we had so that is something you definitely want to keep in mind unearned income you may have to pay taxes on and unearned income is like dividends capital gains um interests whatever this these investments are making you that you did not actually earn they are going to consider unearned income and now saying that you have to realistically sit down and say okay based on how much i'm going to be putting back in this account and the average rate of return how much am i going to realistically earn in unearned income every single year and you may very well find that it's not going to be the limit so for 2023 um i want to make sure i get this right so for 2023 the first 1250 dollars of your child's unearned income is not taxed so basically based on how much you are putting aside in these accounts and the average rate of return for these accounts if you're not expecting to make more than $1,250 off of your investment off of what you have deposited into these accounts then you may very well not even have to deal with taxes at all the next $1,250 is going to be taxed at the child's tax rate they call this the kitty tax um, it is basically just a lower tax rate than the parents or the guardians and then any amount over the $2,500 which is the first $1,250 the second $1,250 is going to be taxed at the parents marginal rate so basically if your child is not earning more than $1,250 in a year in unearned income and they have no other earned income then you 
won't really have to deal with taxes at all. And when you do get to a place where you are making over $1,250 in unearned income, um, then I would definitely 100% recommend you look into other accounts because this can have some disadvantages for you. Now, really quickly, just to touch on some pros of this account, because I know that we went over some cons. Once again, your rate of return is a lot higher than it would be in a traditional savings because your funds are actually going to be invested in things like stocks and bonds. So you're earning a lot more for the money that you have deposited. So that is definitely a pro in anyone's eyes, I would think. And also there are no penalties like there would be in a college savings plan, like a 529 where you have to spend this money on educational expenses. With the UGMA, they are free to use the money on whatever it is their little hearts desire. If they want to, you know, go into home ownership, if they want to use it for business expenses or helping them to start up a business, once again, paying for, you know, like their, their bills, if they are in college, they can do that whatever it is that they want and that's what really drew me to it because um yeah you have the other accounts on the back end but i really just want to have an account where my kids have something that they can have when they turn 18 and they can use it to their heart's desire now you may be wondering okay so that's great but how would i go about opening up an UGMA or an UGMA account. I will say in my experience, it's basically like opening up any other online account. It's very easy. You just need your basic information. Um, and of course the beneficiaries information like their name because you are going to have to list the beneficiary. But definitely look into Fidelity, look into Vanguard, look into Charles Schwab. Um, I have my kids UGMA account through Early Bird. It's a cute little app. Um, um, and you can leave them messages every time that you make a contribution. So when they come of age and it is time for you to hand the account over to them, they can see all the times you've made contributions. You can invite your family and friends to make contributions and they can leave cute notes or videos too. It's just a cute little scrapbook. And the way I envision it is like when my kids graduate from high school, I hand it over to them and say, this is what you have in this account to use. The money is yours. And then they can go through and look at everything. So that that's what really drew me to Early Bird too and what has kept me here with Early Bird. Now, I will say, if you do use Early Bird, there is a fee. I want to say it's about $2.99, $2.99 a month, um, and that's not per person. So I will leave the details down below for you just in case you want to check that out in the description or somewhere on the screen. Uh, but definitely take advantage of the sites like Fidelity and Vanguard because they are going to have more information on these accounts for you. Make sure you are reading over it from top to bottom before you open up the account. Definitely with any account that you are trying to open up for investing. But definitely some other accounts to check out would be a 529 plan, a college savings plan, um, a custodial Roth IRA if the child is old enough to have earned income. Um, and speaking on education, if you know that your child is going to pursue a higher education, I don't know how you would know that, but if you are really banking on it, um, then definitely look into a college savings plan because that is going to be your best bet there are tax benefits with this um, I have one but now since they made a change in which any unused money can be rolled into a Roth IRA I will be opening up another one I just had one because I didn't know you know if one child is going to pursue a higher education and one isn't I wanted to roll the money over to the other child but definitely that is a huge perk and it is tax deferred so you won't be paying taxes on anything as you go. So those are definitely some accounts to check out. And I do know, you know, some people do prefer to open up a brokerage account and so they can manage the funds there. And then when the child comes of age, you know, they move that money over and, and gift the child that way. So that's something you can look into. I am not going to keep it very complicated over here but definitely leave me down below what accounts that you have or accounts that you're looking into if you have a custodial account who is your custodial account through and i will catch you guys in the next one